Welcome again from Fish Lake Valley, the western headquarters of discovertheword.com. And I am pastor of New Hope Missionary Baptist Church in Tehachapi, California. And they allow me to come up here and spend a lot of time preaching God's Word in our little small sanctuary here, you might say. We've been studying all the parables in the Bible by Herbert Locke here. We're on page 141, actually 140 and 41. But my wife, as she was praying, brought something out a while ago that we missed, that the writer missed. So I'm going to go back to John, the first chapter, in the very beginning of John, the first chapter. Talk about all the parables in the Bible, all the metaphors, the allegories, hyperboles metaphors that you can think of in the Bible and John is full of them. And in John 1 and 1 in Greek it says in our Kologos, Kaihologos, Ain Proston, Theon, Kaihologos, Ain Theos. And translated into English John is using a great metaphor here a great allegory, a great type. Now, in the Old Testament, the word Jehovah is made from four consonants, Yod, He, Wal, He. And after Exodus 20 and verse 7, it says, Thou shalt not use the Lord thy God's name in vain, for he shall require it of you. They would never speak the name of Jehovah again, so they referred to him as Havavar, or the word, and sometimes as Hashem, and the modern Jews call him Adonai. But that word is Jehovah, and we get that word Jehovah from the King James Bible, and it really is a very poor pronunciation of it, because we don't know how to say the word, that four continents. There's no way to say it. But John is making a play on words here. It says, In beginning, now, in the book of Genesis, it says, Bar Elohim et with we have to art. It said, in one of the beginnings there, Bar means in, ba, and rosh, head, and the towel on the end of it is plural. In one of the beginnings, God had created the heavens and the earth. Right here, and that's back there in eternity past when the heavens and the earth, is, the heavens and the earth were not created in time as we know it. It was created in eternity past. And in eternity past, even before God created the heavens and the earth, God always existed. And that's what John 1 and 1 here is talking about. In beginning, singular, RK, NRK is lockety, singular, feminine, first glintion, Greek word. Singular. Barashith is plural. In one of the beginnings. But right here, it's talking about in the beginning where nothing else existed but God. In beginning, he kept on existing or kept on being Hologos. Now, Hologos is a Hebrewism for Havavar. And so, if you translate Havavar from the word Jehovah, so to speak, it says, in beginning kept on being the Jehovah. Yahweh, whatever you want to call him, how you, however we want to mispronounce it, because we don't know how to say that word. Word. In the beginning was the uh, Havavar, Hologos, Jehovah, and the Jehovah kept on being, it says, Kai Hologos, Ain, Proston, Theo. It says here, the translation of it, and the word kept on being toward the God or inseparable from the Godhead. How can Jehovah be not God? And then the last part of it is, and there's three sentences here, tied together by conjunction, caught. In the beginning kept on being the Word. Number one sentence. Number two sentence, and the Word kept on being inseparable from the Godhead. Number three sentence, Kai or yes, 
or even the Jehovah kept on being the God. The whole logos ain't theos. Whole logos there, that's Omicron Sigma on the end of that, Omicron Sigma on the end of the theos. Number, gender, and case, they are the same person. The word, the Jehovah, kept on being God. He never ceased being God. Now, this metaphor, allegory, parable type that we see here brought from the Old Testament Hebrew comes down to John 1.14. And John 1.14, Marilyn, can you, can you quote John 1.14 for me in Greek? Just the first few words. Marilyn? 1.14. Hakai hologo sarks again to all right, and the word flesh he became for himself, literally. And he dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as the only begotten from beside the Father, full of grace and full of truth. We see that. And the word flesh became, and Jehovah flesh became. Jehovah became flesh. Now, Marilyn, what does Jehovah mean? He who shall become. He who shall become. So there is where the title of Jehovah is fulfilled, right here in John 1.14. John says back there that Jehovah always existed and was always a part of the Godhead. And then he goes on to saying that he was in the beginning with God, Jehovah was, all things came into being through him, and apart from him nothing came into being, that is, come into being, in, in being. In him was life, and, and the life was the light of men. Now he's talked about the metaphor of the parable of the light. In John, or not John, but Genesis, the first chapter, it said God went out and straightened out the earth. And then light became. Now here is when light became among mankind again. And in him was life, and life was the light of mankind. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. Now Genesis 1 and 1 says, in Genesis 1 and 2, that is, in 1 and 1 it says, And, and God he had created the heavens and the earth. Then John 1, or Butter Sheath, Genesis 1 and 2 says, We haaretz, hatya tuhu wabuhu, we hoshuk el penei, the home. We rua Elohim, Meripachet El Panei And then it says, and darkness became over the faces of the deep. And then it says, Spirit God suffered over the waters, the muddy waters. There, Jehovah, the Holy Spirit, also put the earth back together. And there's where we can see the reconstruction of the earth in Genesis, the first chapter. John says here, There came a man sent from God whose name was John. This is John the Baptist. And he came for a witness that he might bear witness of the light that all might believe in him. And he was not the light, but came that he might bear witness to that light. He's a forerunner. He is Elijah. And there was the true light which coming into the world enlightens every man. He was in the world and the world was made through him, by him, and for him and the world did not know him. The word world there is cosmos. This is the order. God set the world back in order. It had become destruction and God set it in order. Now, in Genesis 3rd chapter, we see the destruction of the earth again put back into the hands of Satan by Adam himself. What Adam did to us, we're still suffering for today. What Adam did to us, we're still suffering for today, and the creation is suffering for it. And he came to his own, and those who were his own did not receive him. But as many as received him to him, he gave 
the right to become children of God, even those who believe in His name, His authority, His person, who were born not of blood, nor of the wills of the flesh, nor of the wills of man, but of God. And then we see John 1.14. And the Jehovah flesh He became, and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory, the glory is the only begotten from the Father, full of grace and truth. And John bore witness of Him, cried out, saying, This is He whom I said, He has come after me as a higher, older, and higher rank, for He always existed before me. For of His fullness we have all received in grace upon grace. 17. For the law was given through Moses, and grace and truth were realized through Jesus Christ. The law pointed us to Jesus. No man has seen God at any time. The only begotten God, the one being in the bosom of the Father, that one, it says, he has explained him. But that's not what it says. It comes from Echonago in Greek. It says, that one has led himself out. It's middle voice again. Aris tense, middle voice. Functilier action, middle voice. Jesus became flesh one time, not every time in the Eucharist. You're not going to bring him down to heaven and put him in a wafer. Jesus became flesh one time. For one reason. To redeem the world. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son to whosoever believed in Him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Let's go on with the rest of that little episode there in John, the third chapter. For God did not send His world into the wor- Son into the world to judge or condemn the world, but that the world should be saved through Him. He who believes in Him is not judged. He who does not believe in Him is already judged because he has not believed in the name, the authority of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the judgment that the light has come into the world. Again, the figure of light. The figure of speech of light. The light has come into the world. And men love darkness, Scotia. They love Scotia rather than the light. For their deeds were evil. For everyone who does evil hates the light and does not come into the light, lest his deeds should be exposed. He who practices the truth comes to the light, but his deeds may be manifest as having been wrought of God. Back to the first chapter again. Now we talked about the Word became flesh, that Jehovah became flesh. The law was given through Moses and grace and truth were realized had become, had been fulfilled in Jesus Christ. No man has seen God at any time, the only begotten God, the one being in the bosom of the Father. He has led himself out. And this is the witness of John when the Jews sent to him priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? And he confessed and did not deny. He confessed that I am not the Christ. And they asked him, Then who are you? Are you Elijah? And he said, I am not. Are you the prophet? Are you Moses? And he said, No. And they said to him, Who are you so that we may give an answer to those who sent us? Who do you say about yourself? And then he says, I am Elijah. I am he, the voice of one crying in the wilderness, make straight the way of the Lord. As Isaiah the prophet has said, also Malachi. And now they had been sent from the Pharisees. They had been sent from the Pharisees. That Sanhedrin Cartman made up of Pharisees and Levites and priests and then the one high priest. 23, 23, 23 and 1 makes 70. Now they had been sent from the Pharisees and they asked him and said to him, Why then are you baptism if you are not the Christ, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? And John answered and said to them, I baptize in water, but among you stand one whom you do not know. It is he who comes after me in the throng, the shoelaces of whose sandal I am not worthy to untie. These things took place in Bethany beyond the Jordan when John was baptized. 
now we have a wonderful, another wonderful picture. Another wonderful picture of the Lamb. A picture of the Lamb of God. I've got a message you know, I'm going to preach. Where is the Lamb? Here's the Lamb. This is the Lamb of God. When Abraham took Isaac up on top of Mount Moriah in Jerusalem, or where Jerusalem would be, when he got up there, he said, Dad, Papa, Father, Papa, where's the Lamb? He said, God will provide the Lamb. Here's the Lamb. The next day he saw Jesus come to him and said, Behold, the Lamb of God who bears away the sin of the world. This is he on whom behalf of whom I said, After me comes man who is higher in rank than I am, for he existed before me. Now reality, John the Baptist was Jesus' cousin, and he was six months older than Jesus in the womb. Now American Indians, see, I'm 70 years old and nine months. But as an Indian, I am 71 years old. So I always think I'm 71 years old because I was alive. Now the Bible tells us right here when when conception begins. The Bible in the New Testament has different words for child. Technos. That's a, that's a birth, born, son, yelad in the Hebrew. That means a, a birth and caught and, and, and gestated and brought forth child. There's the word wheels, which means heir. That's wheels. That means son or heir, the firstborn son. And there's the word uh, napios, which means speechless baby. And there's the word here, which brathos, which means the conception. Now Jesus was conceived six months after John the Baptist was conceived. But they were both in existence. Remember Elizabeth when she had the child? When, when she was carrying the child, the child leaped in her womb when she found out Mary was pregnant. John the Baptist was alive. He was alive. He was in the womb. And he's six months older than Jesus. But Jesus, in reality, in beginning, kept on being the Word, the Jehovah. And the Word, kept, and the Word, the Jehovah, kept on being an inseparable part of the Godhead because the Word kept on being the Jehovah, kept on being God. And here he was, for he existed before me. Because he just saw that in John 1 1 and John 1 14. For he existed before me. And I did not recognize him, but in order that he might be manifest to Israel, I came baptizing. I came dipping, by the way, in water. Not with water, but in water. Baptism was an old, old custom when Jesus was baptized on John. They had done that all the way back to Abraham's time. All the lambs before they were sacrificed had been dipped, baptized. I gave him dipping in water. This is John the Dipper, John the Immerser. The word baptizo means to dip, and the Latin word is mergio. We got our word immerse from the Latin word mergio. Now, if it was sprinkling, it would have been rontizo in Greek, and if it had been pouring, it would have been nipto in Greek. And John bore witness, saying, I beheld the Spirit descending as a dove out of heaven, and it remained upon him. And I did not recognize him, but he who sent me to baptize the dip in water said to me, Upon whom you see the Spirit descending and remaining upon him, this is the one who baptized in the Holy Spirit. Jesus didn't become the Son of God at baptism. We don't become children of God at baptism. Jesus was always the eternal Son of God. John 1.1 1, 1, He existed forever in eternity past according to our little chart here. And I have seen and borne witness that this is the Son of God. The Son of God. The Heir of God. The only Son of God. Verse 35 And again the next day John standing and two of his disciples and he looked upon Jesus as he walked and said Behold! 
the Lamb of God. Where is the Lamb? This is the Lamb. This is every lamb that was ever sacrificed in the Old Testament typified Jesus. If you sacrificed the lamb today for your sin, it would be blasphemy. The Lamb of God came. And he looked upon Jesus as he walked and said, Behold the Lamb of God. And the two disciples heard him saying they followed Jesus. And Jesus turned and beheld them following, and he said to them, What do you seek? And they said to him, Rabbi which translated means teacher. Where are you staying? And he said to them, Come and you will see. And they came therefore and saw where he was staying. And they stayed with him that day, for it was about the tenth hour. The tenth hour. About 4 p.m. And one of the two whom heard John speak followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. And he found his own brother Simon who said to him, We have found the Hamashiach, Messiah, the Anointed One, which translates Christ. And he brought him to Jesus and he looked at him and said, You are Simon, the son of John, and you shall be called Cephas, which means, and that is an Aramaic, which means the same thing as Petros, a little stone, a little stone. The next day he proposed to go forth to Galilee and found Philip and Jesus said to him, Follow me. And Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. And Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him whom Moses and the law and the prophets wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph and the son of God. And Nathanael said to him, Can any good thing come out of Nazareth? Because that was a priest where priests were trained. And Philip said to him, Come and see. And Jesus saw Nathanael coming to him and said of him, Behold, an Israelite, indeed, in whom there is no guile, no wickedness, no deceit. And Nathanael said, How do you know me? And Jesus said unto him, Behold, Philip, for Philip called you when you were under the fig tree, I saw you. And he was praying. And he knew that this is the Messiah, the Hashem. And Nathanael answered and said unto him, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. And Jesus answered and said, Because I said to you that I saw you under the fig tree, do you not believe? Do you believe? And he said, You shall see greater things than these. And said to him, Truly, truly, I say to you, You shall see heavens open, and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. That's on the, that's on the Mount of Olives when they took him back to heaven. Is Jesus going to take you to heaven with him? Or have you asked Jesus to save your soul and to forgive your sins? If you haven't, you need to do that today. Jesus is the Son of God. He's the only way of salvation. It's not baptism. It's not the ordinances of the church that you keep to be, get to heaven. Baptism is not a vehicle of grace. The Lord's Supper is not a vehicle of grace. The stations of the cross are not vehicles of grace. It is Jesus that saves your soul and Him alone and nothing else. Our Father, we send this message to you today. Please use it as your will and for your will. Forgive us for your failure. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.